On Friday, literally in a couple of days time, I will be heading back to do my fifth and final year as a Masters of Architecture student, which is absolutely crazy to think, kind of scares me, <laughs> my last year fully in education. But in preparation for you fellow architect students that are either beginning university or returning like I am, I'm going to be talking about how the iPad can boost your architecture student project. <laughs> Good afternoon people, welcome back to a brand new video. This morning has been busy, so I'm currently on my way to grab a coffee and I've also got to get some books from the library because I'm currently writing my dissertation and I'm doing a lot of reading currently. So I'm heading to my favorite place, my favorite coffee place in Marlebone currently. Um, yeah, let's grab a coffee. <laughs> sorted got some books from the library now we're going to be talking about morfolio trace a few months back i began my ipad drawing journey using morfolio trace and so today i thought i'd just talk through some key features some simple but key features that i think you guys would be great to learn heading back to architecture school these morfolio trace features are fundamentals so without further ado let's dive into the ipad so the first thing to do is set up the page and you can do that by heading over to this custom tab here setting up a blank page and when you go into here you get the option of the paper size so for this example we're going to do a2 and then in here you've got the option of setting the scale uh, so if you work in imperial you've got all of the options here but for this demonstration we're going to work at 1 to 50. and then when you open up the page this is an a2 page now set at 1 to 50 which is really really handy because obviously if you're drawing everything's going to be to scale and also down here on the bottom right hand corner, you've got your scale bar. So as you can see here, when you zoom in and zoom out, it adjusts to that. And the beauty of setting the scale is that all of your tools that you'll be using will also be set to that scale. So your ruler, your grids will already be set to that specific scale that you've set. And in a situation where you're not setting up a brand new document and you already have a drawing that you've either scanned in or you've produced in AutoCAD or something, you can come into here, you can import it, and then you can set the scale after you've imported the drawing. So in that case, you would click the wrench up here, you click the scale, you do set scale. And basically, if you had a one meter wall or a 10 meter wall, you'd basically measure from one point to one point, type in how long that wall is, and then you click the tick. Feature numero one is the grids. So if you head over here to the left hand side, click the wrench, head down to set grid. So what we're doing here is basically setting a a grid to scale which you could do a floor plan from an elevation or some kind of diagram so in this instance i'm going to do a one meter grid so if you click that number there click one meter grid you could either do meter centimeter millimeter but we're going to do a one meter grid if you click the origin point you can align it to a corner or you can align it to the bottom or in the center, which is usually ideal. And here you've got this yellow toggle, which you can use to rotate. And then along here, you've got the different types of grids that you can set up. So this is your typical ortho grid. You've then got your isometric grid, and then you've got your dot grid. So if we set it to ISO and click the color here, you can change the color of your grid. But one of the cool features is that you can change the opacity. Click the green tick and you're back into your workspace. Feature number two is the ruler, and this isn't any kind of typical ruler. This ruler is pretty cool. And with these ultra smart rulers, you don't have to mess around with one of these scale rulers, flicking it around, rotating it, trying to figure out the correct scale. It's all there, it's all set up. You don't have to stress about one of these. So once you've got your grid set, you can go freehand, you can start sketching away. That doesn't look too great. So what I'm going to do is work with my ruler alongside my grid. So the ruler that you've got is going to be to the scale that you've set. So as you can see here, if you zoom in or zoom out, the ruler will adjust, which is really handy. So if you click the settings button at the top, if you've got assist turned off, you can draw anywhere on the page and it won't follow the ruler. And then if you draw along the ruler, it will create a nice straight line for you. However, if you tap on the settings, turn the assist on, you can draw anywhere on the page and it will follow 
the ruler. You can change the angle of the ruler. So if you wanted to draw at the 30 degree of the ISO, you can follow the grid by having it set at 30 degrees. And if you wanted to draw any angle, tap on the screen and you can do the infinity angle. So if we set it at a 30 degree angle, we can start following the grid and start creating some kind of geometries, some kind of forms at an isometric angle. And if you quickly want to adjust the angle of your ruler, double tap and they got a nice little animation. And if you're at an early stage of your project and you wanted to do some massing and some form finding, you could spend a lot of time doing lots of iterations and set up a full page of these isometric drawings. And whilst working through these types of drawings, you can turn the grid on and off to see kind of how your progress is coming along. And if you wanted to add a little bit more depth to these drawings, add a bit of color, kind of add a bit of volume to them, you could select them all, copy, move them and start using the smart fill feature. Feature number three is the smart fill. So to use the smart fill feature, click this tool at the top here. And basically you get given this target point and you can target this anywhere. And it will basically just fill in areas if they are a closed region. So obviously this is really important. You want to make sure that all of your geometries are closed. And at the top here, you've got the option of either doing a single fill or a multiple fill. If we wanted to start adding some depth to these drawings, we could go along here, start filling in all of the top pieces of the geometries. You can change the color. So if you wanted to go orange or you wanted to go red, you can change the opacity so you can go a really strong red or obviously quite a faint one. And then another key feature is that you can change the tolerance. So if you've got a, a geometry that is quite small or quite large, you can adjust the tolerance and as you can tell, as you change the tolerance level, it will fill in significantly more or significantly less. Once you've kind of highlighted your spaces, another key feature is that it will tell you your meter square of these areas. So if you're working on a floor plan, you want dimensions of individual rooms or spaces, you can get that by using this feature. And even if you've done a drawing by hand in your sketchbook or on some tracing paper, and you didn't want to spend a load of time measuring it, trying to figure out your square meters, if you've got any awkward angles, etc., you can scan it in on your iPad, import it into Morfolio Trace, set the scale, and use this smart fill feature to figure out the square meters. Smart thinking, <laughs> you, you'll thank me later, trust me. And if you didn't want to just add a solid color and instead you wanted to add a hatch, you would do exactly the same thing. You would highlight the spaces, but then you would click this toggle here and you can add a smart hatch. So if you wanted a diagonal hatch or a cross hatch, or you wanted to kind of show some brickwork in an elevation, you'd simply select what hatch you'd like. You'd add it. You can change the tolerance slightly and then you would basically do exactly the same thing. Click the bucket and there you go. And in some instances, if you felt like you wanted to keep this page, but you wanted to start working on similar forms, you could duplicate the drawings that you've done by clicking the three toggles, duplicate. It will create a layer on top of that. And then with three fingers, you can select the drawing and move it over to the right here. So what you're doing here is creating another workspace, but with the same drawings. So you can head over here, start making some annotations, etc., or making some adjustments to these drawings. And the fourth and final feature is the stencil. If you click this toggle at the top here, you will get a stencil that will appear. You can click the settings button and you can go through all of the different stencils that are already preloaded into the project. So if you wanted people, if you wanted different types of walls, or figures or trees, etc. You can also add your own custom stencils into the project as well. So if we wanted, for example, um, someone walking, you can add it here, you can rescale it, and then you can fill it in by clicking the bucket. And the different options here will allow you to flip them, mirror them, lock rotate it so you can't move it, and also invert the stencil in case you wanted to fill the outside instead of the inside. So those features were the features that I wanted to talk about today in this video. Um, they're kind of like the fundamentals of Morfolio Trace and really useful tools to use in your early stages of your projects. And some example drawings that use these key features in Morfolio Trace is this drawing by Carmen Gazala, this beautiful drawing by James Ackers, and this beautiful detailed section by Victor Kelly. So if you found that useful, make sure you smash it in the button. And yeah, thank you. <laughs> so yeah, that is going to be a wrap on today's video. I'm going to be continuing doing videos with Morfolio Trace. 
diving into their key features and kind of having it alongside my projects at university. So if you guys want to continue this journey with me, make sure to subscribe, hit the notification bell, and I'll see you next time. Yes. <laughs>